What's up, guys? And of course, welcome to Will and Earth Pokemon Wi-Fi Battle with your troll, of course, the Scarender. And finally, we are back for, of course, another post commented battle because it's been so long, especially to do, done this before, of course, the leaked battle and whatnot. So I'm finally glad to be back here, of course, with a new tier from UU. And we're going against Nova Hawk, which actually is an LBA player, which I actually lost against in the league. So a bit exciting, and it's always really cool to go up against a player that I know plays really regressive. And as you guys see, my opponent has a very aggressive team. Been of course with Mian Xiao, Hunch Crow, Fortress, which is a possible lead, Gudra, Mega Blastoise, obviously, and of course Darmanitan. I myself is using a team that I've used before, but this time I can use it better because of two new entries in UU being of course the Conk Elder and Sylveon. The Conk is Assault Vested, the Sylveon is Timid Specs, because I really don't want to risk anything with uh, the speed tiers and whatnot. And outside of that, Mega Sharpedo, Metagross being more faster to be able to outspeed uh, Timid, uh, Sylveon, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much the size of things that kind of OCO it with a meter mash. Bandit, Darmanitan, and of course, Tornadus with the most important more of all, which is everything I need to make this team work Tailwind. And outside of that, we got U Turn, Hurricane, and Grass Nod. So it's a decent team, very aggressive. And due to the lineup from my opponent's team here, I see definitely that Conkelder is my best lead because it's very unlikely that he will lead with Hunchcrow being that it's somewhat fragile. So, yeah, and I'm definitely seeing Fred Ray's benefit in. So, with all that said, let's get into the game. I should also say that my Conkelder has no, it has a Soul Spice, but it doesn't really have enough. Or it's fairly physical with some speed and I do some HP. So anyway, he will leave with um, Darmanitan, and that's quite right. I was really hoping he went for Flare Blitz, but it's going to go for a U-turn, and that's definitely going to show him with the damage output that that's probably a Scar set, or it's definitely a Scar set. There would be no re a reason using it. And uh, he's going to bring in Leonardo, with of course being the Blastoise. And all I was thinking here is, since I am Guts and not Sheer Force, I really hope he may evolve and go for a Skull, and I really hope I get burned, like, those following sessions is really all I want to see. Outside of that, I really have nothing to it. So Blastoise, tremendous and really, really, really nasty. Uh, gonna go for that mighty Scald and we're gonna soak that. Actually kinda bad, but we do get to burn. Uh, so I was fairly sure I would take now to of course a 50% damage output on me, but yeah. I mean, we've been in these situations before, we know how this works. If we have the odds against us, it's gonna be against us, and this is definitely one of those times. So I'll go for Mag Punch here since it was naturally slower. He'll go to his Maria, being of course the Fretress. And um, yeah, Fretress is bulky. Like, I have the Guts boost here, I am like steady dangerous. But um, nah, that ain't gonna work, ain't gonna cut it. But that's alright, because we can pack another Drain Punch behind us, and uh, I basically do more damage than I am. Then I lose. So that's the most important part. But I can't do anything against this like Stealth Rocks. They're definitely gonna come from the field. And if he has spikes, they're gonna go up too, but it can at least hurt me. And we're looking to two turns of um, hit me just punching him till he's dead. So I'm not gonna lie. I felt extremely comfortable here because something we're gonna die. Jeff the Congelder just breaking down walls at this time. It really isn't threatened. Obviously, like stated before, Hunchcrow is the only mod that could possibly take it out. And having that in mind, I knew that once this Fortress was done with, or if it decides to act Blastoise, then I knew Hunch was gonna come in. And I really, really have no good switchings for Hunchcrow. Like, Hunchcrow's gonna come in, kill something, get Moxie, and I have to figure out things from there. So, anyway, Fortress obviously goes out, he gets the Toxic Spikes up, which is extremely unfortunate because. I am a high professive team, so I don't really like the residual damage. Keep going. Uh, so Al Capone, very nice name for the Hunch Crow. And like stated before, I have no reason whatsoever even trying to switch out on this. And he goes directly for the Brave Bird. And you know, we are definitely whittled down this um, Hunch Crow really early on. So I really like that. Uh, obviously, there are some. There, the Mon isn't a timer due to Life Orb, which is good. So I do decide here to actually bring in my. Tornadus, all I really wanted was set up Tailwind because I really needed to get that speed up and I knew that I could lure him for Sucker Punch since I'm naturally faster. So I had a good opportunity to do that freely and then I decided to... I might as well sack Tornadus. If he goes for another Sucker Punch, 
it's very likely to take me out. Uh, he doesn't do that, which is nice, because that means that he loses his Hunch Crow. And like I said there, I'm pretty sure that Sucker Punch would kill me, so... Ooh, bit risk on his side, but I get it too. He definitely was predicting me to switch out to something else. And the only mana I had to switch in was actually Sylveon. Um, but due to the issues here, that's not gonna work. Do so I go to Jump Jump instead? And I know Gudra is his, definitely his switch in. But the thing is here that if I can use Jump Jump at best of my abilities, that would be you turning on it if he decides to use it. He's either that or lock himself to Flare Blitz if he brings his own. And yeah, man and Tan. Basically break it apart, lose my Jump Jump. Uh, so I go for the U-turn, steady and slow there. I was really predicting an Earthquake or anything like that. Or, or it could be special oriented if that's the case. Muddy Water or Draco is what's gonna land on me. So uh, Sylveon was my best call. Sylveon definitely covered all the tracks. And I will say this, luckily for me, he goes for Draco. This thing learns Sludge Wave too, so it's not. Is I'm not out of the woods yet. But luckily for me, obviously, I am not that hardly pressured. But here's the thing: he still got that blast toys. You know that one to live one HP? Yeah, still kicking. Awesome. So I have to lock myself into Hyper Voice, and I'm pretty sure my Tailwind is gonna be peated out now, which means that uh, that um, that Dermanitan he got is now, you know. Saying dangerous is kind of kind of understating it. I say it's gonna piss my pants, scary right now. So what I have to do is sack something, and the only thing I can sack against a guy like this is Jum Jum. So sadly, I should say my own Darmanitan, which being a vastly superior Darmanitan, being a bit better name of Jum Jum, is sadly gonna go down with our Flare Blitz. But the thing is here, <laughs> had I have Tailwind up and locked myself to Flare Blitz myself, I would O code him with my own Flare Blitz. So that's how dangerous Star Manhattan is to contract with his defenses. Here's the just the thing, so due to that Star Manhattan is one of his safer money, I only got three months left. I only need to set Tailwind in motion, and after that I can actually settle the game for Psyshock with uh, my Sylveon. So I'm I'm pretty much got it in the bag. I mean I'm pretty sure that his uh, Mian Xiao possibly could go for fake outs and stall out the Tailwind turns. And if that's the case, then that's unfortunate, but that means that we at least take two months out, so I have that in mind. Like, basically, I have Sharpedo Lift, I can Speed Boost, I, I got something for the Darmanitan still. Uh, so anyway, he's gonna switch that out, obviously, not having any further use on Gudra, so I kind of get there with the Gummy Bear. <laughs> so he's just gonna fall there. And like I said, his last two months are in Mian Xiao and uh, the um, Darmanitan, so I was pretty sure that I was looking into a situation where Fake Out would be a thing, and I would take him out with a with, um, Psyshock, or would sack his Star Manitan the following turn, and then basically wrap things up from there. But, but, he doesn't have Fake Out, and that's good, because that means that this is ba basically GG, because his Mianisha definitely can take this Psyshock, no way in hell, and nor can his poor, poor, poor Star Manitan. So Sylveon takes pretty steady Tailwind kills. I do believe that Sylveon here got four KOs, that's how dangerous we could say that Sylveon is in this meta, and just, my god. But I will say this to Novahawk though, if anything, I think it was a really, really fun game, and um, he said this team was not made with the new meta in mind, I kinda get that. Uh, I Obviously I use Metagross, which I rarely do, because Metagross I feel is kinda bad in, um, in Yu-Yu, but now when Zapdos is gone, which in my regard is one of those clear checks it just works a lot better and it goes in contrast with being able to outspeed Conkeldor which you can go for a sin headbutt up against and then we got of course the situation that is Sylveon being able to kick Sylveon uh, with Metagross is gonna be an important part because people are at, at of this moment I should say are using Agrons and I, I get that Mega Agron actually covers it but it is weak against Conkeldor which for this game just worked, like he broke asunder the team quite effortlessly and that's what Conkeldor does. I'm not a big fan of Conkeldor, I feel that uh, Conkeldor is kind of underwhelming OU, but in UU it's it's breaking things, like it it doesn't really... I'm trying to like find the right word, but the right word basically is, is that it, it just eats things. Um, it takes so much damage well, it can recover decently with Rain Punch, it has so many coverage moves, and uh, 
Mac Punch, Priority, being a slow mo with a massive attack stat, yeah. That's a mod that is generally dangerous, and there is really no not a whole lot of mods that can take it on. And um, that is something that's gonna be forecast throughout this. Well, from right now May to August, I'm not sure if Kangelor is gonna stay in UU. To be honest, because I think it's it's a bit on that powerful side, and uh, losing Septos in UU means that guys like that breaks the southern teams. And like I said, Metagross got. A whole lot better with Zapdos gone, so we'll see how the meta develops. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, I'm gonna try to do more of these uh, tier-based Wi-Fi battles with post commentary because I really enjoy them. I feel I don't upload too many of them, and I really wanna do that. And also, working on new intro, as you guys saw, that's a pre-work. I'm, I'm actually do trying to do something bigger, better. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but that's that's the plan at least. Uh, but yeah, with all that said, guys, if you stand or being a part of this for so long, then hey, thank you for doing so. Um, always glad to have you guys here. So thank you for watching as always, make sure to leave a like I guess, and if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, because I'm a good guy. <laughs> nah, but anyway guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care, bye.